It is a world of the quick and the dead. Its ancient blood rites, evolved over millions of years, endure to this day. Savage and without remorse, nature seeks a deadly balance. In the world of predator and prey, the sagas of life and death are played by the rules of the deadly game. Three billion years ago, somewhere in the silent waters of an ancient sea, a world was born. The first living things had appeared on the earth. Some two billion years later, multi-celled creatures had begun to course through the primordial seas. And soon after, in geological terms, the first predators appeared, and the world would never again be the same. Strange new forms, alien and deadly, began cruising the once peaceful waters for prey. Along the wave-battered margin between the sea and the land, new forms of life emerged, carnivorous animals that masqueraded as plants. Among the flowery hunters were the anemones, their voracious mouths ringed with deadly tentacles, and the shrub-like basket stars, creatures that cling to the sea floor waiting to seize passing prey in the embrace of their skeletal arms. As predators evolved, their prey developed sophisticated defenses, launching an endless cycle of adaptation and counteradaptation. For many sea dwellers, the first line of defense was armor, a sturdy shell to serve as a fortress for the delicate creature that hid within. With predators and prey both vying for the competitive edge, the pace of evolution quickened in the sea, spawning ever more complex, ever more cunning creatures. Today, the giant Pacific octopus, with an arm span of up to 30 feet, is a tireless hunter of armored invertebrates, like this shore crab. The suction cups on the arms of the hunter grip the carapace of the crab and sweep it into its powerful beak to be dismembered and devoured. In an attempt to protect its nest from the predator, a lingcod attacks the octopus and the octopus reacts by turning an ashy white, a signal that its emotions have been aroused. The most sophisticated of the world's invertebrates, the octopus has evolved an elaborate arsenal of defenses. Against the sharp teeth of the lingcod, it hurls its hidden weapon, a blinding smokescreen of ink. According to plan, the ink confuses the fish and gives the octopus the opportunity to escape. The wolf eel is the arch rival of the octopus, 
competing with it for its prey and for the rocky crevices in the reef which it selects for its lair. Snake-like in its habits, the wolf eel is a highly specialized predatory fish. Its powerful jaws have evolved to crush the shells of crustaceans. In its affection for shellfish, it is hardly alone. With its suction-tipped arms, the giant sunflower sea star is one of the sea's most formidable predators. But its prey is not defenseless. A queen scallop jets from the arms of one hunter into the jaws of another. Primarily a sit-and-wait predator, the wolf eel prefers to keep to its lair, waiting for meals to come to it. At the door of its den, the remains of many banquets. To avoid being eaten, the surgeon fish evolved razor-sharp scalpels at the base of its tail which it flails at any who dare to attack it. The spines of the elegant lionfish serve a similar function, protecting it as it drifts through the reef. The dragon eel, by contrast, relies on camouflage to escape other hunters as it waits for a meal. Since the dawn of predation, camouflage has played a vital role in the struggle for survival. As the bat ray blends with the rocks of the reef, the shovel nose ray does its best to disappear against the sandy bottom. In the deadly contest, both predator and prey have evolved ingenious disguises ways to persuade hungry eyes that they are not what they may seem. A crab appropriates for its use the discarded shells of snails, thereby gaining extra protection as it hunts. While a masterfully camouflaged stonefish settles onto the reef to wait in ambush for minnows. But the ocean's ultimate camouflage artist may well be the flounder, a fish which blends almost perfectly into the sandy bottom. In time, the great revolution which began in the primeval seas spread to the waiting land. A new day had begun and haunting new sounds shattered the tranquil dawn. It was some 70 million years ago that the first members of the order Carnivora appeared, and today their heirs still vigorously pursue their prey through the land. In the American Southwest, a three-month-old coyote pup gains much-needed practice in the difficult art of the chase and the kill. As in the sea, predator and prey are well-matched. In the contest between the two, neither is guaranteed of success. Even as grown-ups, the coyotes will be lucky if one hunt in six succeeds. A horned lizard freezes, banking on its camouflage to confuse the predator. As long as it remains motionless, the lizard has a chance that it won't be recognized as food. 
The young hunters, however, have learned to trust their noses. The deadly game is played in countless ways, but nowhere is it played with such high drama than on the sprawling Serengeti Plain in the wild heartland of East Africa. In a setting that has changed little since the last great ice age, herds of grazers that number in the millions sweep the plains in a restless quest for the fresh green grass that sustains them. As producers of protein, the herds must always be wary, watchful for the lean and hungry hunters who depend on their flesh for survival. of wild dogs has targeted a young impala. No predator in Africa is said to be more lethal, more skillful as a killer. But the dogs are merely links in the food chain, helping to recycle the energy which their prey obtained by grazing on the land. Everything is consumed. Nothing goes to waste. Scavengers like the spotted hyena and the majestic Rupel's vulture make their living by processing the remaining bone, skin, and scraps of flesh. The silverback jackals are hunters in their own right and fierce competitors, even among themselves. As in all of nature, selection favors the dominant individuals who can secure for themselves the scarce resources needed to produce a new generation. But here, the need for water drives the deadly game. The Nile crocodile and the wildebeest are players in an age-old ritual, adversaries in a battle for survival that has raged for millions of years. In a relentless tide, the herds are driven across rivers by their quest to find fresh pastures. But some will find that death waits instead. The tactic of the Nile crocodile is to clamp its jaws onto its prey and to hold it down until it drowns. But only one wildebeest in thousands will fall victim to the hunter, and it is likely to be among those least adapted to survive. As countless generations of predator and prey struggle for survival, the skills of both are sharpened and refined. Through the millennia, the hunters and the hunted have honed their separate talents, and neither, for very long, has held the upper hand. And still today, across the world, the ancient game goes on.
No region on Earth is more thronged with life than the vast Amazon basin. Though this world may seem serene, deadly struggles rage beneath the surface. Here, the contest for survival reaches a fever pitch. The capybara, the world's largest rodent, grazes in the lily beds that crowd the river's edge. It does so at its peril. For beneath the tranquil waters of the stream, a legendary killer waits. The capybara risks its life in the world of the red piranha. normally preys on fish, a school in a feeding frenzy can dismember a horse and swiftly reduce it to bone. While many mammals feed on fish, the capybara has fallen prey to one of the few species of fish that occasionally feast on mammals. razor-sharp teeth of the voracious predators make quick work of the hapless capybara. Reaching a length of more than a foot and weighing up to 10 pounds, the piranhas are awesome predators, even if attacks such as this are rare. The grim duet between predator and prey is performed in endless variations, from the steamy forest to the sluggish streams that snake through the Amazon basin. The silt-rich waters of the streams host more than 2,000 species of fish, an irresistible lure to an enterprising hunter. The neotropical river otter is a true connoisseur of fish, and it lives in the optimum place to indulge its gargantuan hunger. Surrounded by a seemingly limitless food supply, it may capture and kill more than two pounds of fish in a day. In catching fish, the jaws and the paws of the otter perform equally important work. Like most predators, the otter kills only as much as it can eat, but its appetite is prodigious. Though the Kawadimundi is much less skilled at catching fish, it is seen by the otter as competition. By competing over prey, the otter and coati play their part in the march of evolution. For out of competition come more effective, more efficient techniques of predation. As predators, the ants have no equals. In the Amazon forest, a battalion of ferocious army ants raids the nest of a docile ant species, bearing away the eggs of its rivals to feed its own young. Highly evolved and superbly organized, the army ants make all other hunters pale by comparison. Their marching columns, which may number more than a million strong, are the terrors of the forest floor. 
an unfortunate katydid is eaten alive by the horde, suffering a fate which could befall any small creature which stumbles into their path. But the Tyra is also a hunter, with its own plans for a meal. Its dagger-like claws and its sensitive nose are the tools of an expert snake killer. The Bushmaster, a tropical relative of the rattlesnake, and one of the most venomous serpents in the world. Its tongue tests the air for danger, but danger has already found it. A South American cousin of the weasels, the Tyra is a specialist in deadly snakes. Like all good snake hunters, its advantage is speed and the agility required to stay clear of the snake's jaws. As a predator, the Tyra helps to control the population of the snakes, just as the snake controls the population of its prey. But preying on poisonous snakes has a price. The Bushmaster's venom causes the Tyra to froth at the mouth. Amazingly, it is resistant to the poison, and it will survive to hunt again. In the deadly game, not all of the players are animals. Carnivorous plants, like the pitcher plant, have evolved to dine on the flesh of insects that drown in the viscous syrup which collects in the pit of their deep, flowery bowls. The sundew is another seductive killer, snaring its prey with tentacles tipped with one of nature's stickiest substances. By far the most numerous life form on the planet, insects are vital food for a vast range of predators, including the horned lizard, nearly invisible against the sand. A monster in the world of the ants, the lizard feasts on the protein-rich prey, using its sticky tongue to nab the unwary. The lizard could feed on as many ants as it wishes, but nature places a limit on gluttony. A toad wolfs down a juicy beetle, and it may be content not to prey again for more than a day. As in the sea where predation began, camouflage is an essential part of the art of hunting on land. A pair of toads shelters in a freshwater pond barely visible to predators or prey. While a katydid, disguised as a leaf, sweeps the air with its antennae, searching for signs of peril. The praying mantis is also cunningly camouflaged, a plus in its profession as a voracious insect killer. But even it must give way to competition. To protect themselves against predators, many insects have evolved elaborate disguises. A giant tropical moth. When not in motion, it disappears against the trunk of a tree. While a butterfly wears markings which resemble the eyes of an owl to startle its foes. The unearthly roars that filled the tropical forest may be another form of mimicry. They are the howls of the howler monkey, 
a species whose vocal skills have been compared to a chorus of jaguars roaring in unison. Despite appearances, the howlers are generally gentle, and their roars simply serve to let others know that the territory is taken. While the howlers are vegetarians, most other monkeys will eat anything they can find. A saddleback tamarind searches for insects, while a tufted capuchin gnaws on a shoot while watching for something bigger. The pygmy marmoset, the world's smallest monkey, is only five inches long, and to it, a grasshopper is a windfall. A carnivore, when the occasion permits, the tiny monkey supplements its diet of leaves, plant gums, and fruit with any insects it's able to catch. The elusive golden lion tamarind is one of the world's most endangered animals, though in the lush Brazilian forests where it lives, food is rarely hard to find. The dexterous fingers of the little monkeys are ideal for extracting caterpillars from the bowls of the bromeliads where they hide. Clever and resourceful, the tiny hunters gain proteins and nutrients from the caterpillars. Other monkey species have a preference for frogs. The buffy-headed marmoset has found its dinner. Predation is a way of life among the little primates, for whom a frog is a valued prize, a trophy that is hotly contested among the members of the band. In the contest over food, some have seen the roots of human warfare. But vengeance plays no part in animal society and most squabbles are resolved without harm or injury. In the end, it is the most proficient to prevail, those best equipped to play the deadly game. No habitat more severely tests the strengths of predator and prey than the wintry reaches of the northern Rockies. Here, the shaping force to which all life must bend or perish is the environment, one of the harshest on the planet. In late fall, great herds of elk seek out the mountain valleys to graze in ragged groups and to take part in the rut. With clashing horns, the bulls compete for females. Only the winners will sire offspring and will contribute to the next generation. The object here is not to kill, 
but simply to be acknowledged as the victor. In this icy world, weather is a common foe and often the cruelest killer. In a particularly bitter winter, more than half the bison and the elk may fail to find the forage that they need to survive. It is a boon to the scavengers. Winter is the dominant predator here, and it preys on nature's weakest links, on the creatures least adapted to its rigors. But in the struggle to survive, the strongest will endure. The coyotes are cunning scavengers and their ability to switch from a diet of game, which they kill themselves, to a menu of winter-killed carrion may be one of the keys to their reputation as superb survivors. When kills are in short supply, competition may be keen between members of rival coyote groups. But disputes are resolved with posturing and threats, and rarely with bloodshed. A young female, seeking a place at the table, signals her submission to the others, allowing herself to be mounted and pinned down in the snow as a way of acknowledging her subordinate position. As ritual requires, she plays dead, hoping to persuade the others that she is no threat. Then, Tiring of the game, she asserts her right to join the feast. Though generally content to be loners, winter makes the coyotes sociable, and strangers may be drawn from miles away, lured by the promise of a meal. After dining, the coyotes clean their muzzles in the snow, carefully wiping away the strong scent of blood so their sensitive noses can go back to work tracking fresh game. The black-billed magpie is another highly adaptable hunter that relies on carrion in winter. In plusher times, it preys on insects and rodents, but when prey is scarce, it fares better as a camp follower of the coyotes. As it weeds out the weak, winter rewards the resourceful. The death of one brings life to many, and through time, the design of each species is refined by the web of interactions between them. The young female, assuming her submissive role, approaches a fresh carcass. And once again, she submits to the ritual initiation. The scavengers feed until the last scrap is consumed and the energy that once was stored in the tissues of the prey is transformed into fuel so that others may survive. But if there's a more demanding place for a predator to make its living, then surely it is here, in the frozen desert of the Arctic.
This is the realm of the polar bear, the biggest land-based predator on the planet. Suction cups on the soles of the polar bear's feet equip it for life on the ice. And it is here that the bears rear their young and pursue their daily lives. Along the shore, grasses exposed by the wind provide meager food before the bears resume their winter hunt for seals. Twin cubs were born to this female 10 months ago, at the height of the previous winter. Now they accompany her as she searches for food, relying on her for training and protection. Since a male bear may kill the cubs, she must constantly sniff the air for signs of danger. In the mating season, the big males battle ferociously over females, and bears may sometimes be killed in these squabbles. Weighing up to a ton, and reaching a height of 12 feet, the bears make formidable opponents, and a single blow from their sledgehammer paws could leave a foe unconscious. These bears, however, are not playing for keeps. They are fighting to stay in practice, a ritual performed by the males while they wait for the seal hunt to begin. During this restless time, the great bears fast, relying on vast stores of fat from the last hunting season. The jousts are costly in energy, and the bears will be famished and surly by the end of the autumn. Many of the bears carry deep scars from these battles as they begin their trek to the hunting grounds. It is on the drifting sea of ice that the bears find their favorite prey and face their toughest test. The Arctic fox knows the polar bear's habits, and over the millennia, it has developed the knack of following the track of the bears to pick up scraps from its meals. With its short muzzle, its tiny ears, and its dense fur coat, the little fox is well equipped for the cold. It only begins to shiver when the temperature reaches 80 degrees below zero. The fur soled feet of the fox give it some traction on the ice and protect it from the cold as it hunts for a meal. But it is the biting wind that bedevils both the fox and the bear. In this frozen waste, seemingly barren of life, the fox is tolerated by the bear, so long as it keeps its distance. The hunters go their separate ways, hardy predators, prospering, in spite of some of life's toughest odds near the top of the world. When the hunting is poor, as it often is, the great bear makes a day bed in the snow, to doze and to daydream, perhaps, about seals. In a forest, far from the Arctic ice, a close kin of humankind clings precariously near the brink of extinction, the great red ape known as the orangutan. Confined to the islands of Borneo and Sumatra, the orangutans are in many ways mirrors of ourselves. The great apes are primarily vegetarians, 
But somewhere in the distant past, our ancestors took a different path, hunting not just leaves and fruit, but other animals. The chimpanzees of Africa were once thought to be exclusively vegetarians. But a closer look revealed that they are meat eaters, like ourselves, relying on animal prey for as much as 5% of their diet. The powerful teeth, which crack the tough shells of nuts and fruit, are also used for tearing flesh. Above all, the chimps are opportunists prepared to exploit whatever food is available. Fruit is the mainstay of their diet, but fresh meat is greatly prized, and chimps have been known to kill and devour infant chimps from rival groups, even when other sources of food are in plentiful supply. While the cause of the cannibalism among the chimps remains unknown, their kind has gained a grim reputation for brutal acts of predation. In some parts of their range, hunting parties of adult male chimps stalk and kill the smaller monkeys who share their forest home. Herded into an ambush by the hunters, the monkeys flee for their lives. With a party of males on the prowl, a cautious mother moves her infants to safety. The chimps are renowned as problem solvers and they use more tools than any animals except humans. Many of these tools are used for predation. Termites are rich in protein, and the chimps have invented an ingenious method for their capture. With a stick moistened with saliva, the chimps fish for the insects, patiently pulling them one at a time from their nest. The remarkable hunting skills of the chimps are not innate. They are handed down through generations, as each new infant learns from its mother the techniques which she has learned from hers. From here, it is a relatively small step to humankind. A predator prowls through the tropical forest, armed with a hunting tool more sophisticated, but no less deadly than that used by the chimps. The curassow means food to the hunter's family. The dart is tipped with poison from a forest frog. The skill of the hunter is rewarded. Like all the predators in the animal kingdom, the human hunter has stalked and killed his prey in order to survive. So it was for thousands of generations. And so it remains today in a few remote corners of the world. Among the Huitoto Indians of the Amazon basin, the ancient contest between predator and prey is enshrined in ritual.
through the dance, the Huitoto asked the favor of the gods to bring them good fortune in the hunt and to guard their families and themselves from the deadly predators who lived beside them. The boa constrictor is a foe of the Huitoto, a hunter like themselves, whose skills the tribe admires and fears. By symbolically subduing the great constricting snake, the hunters partake of some of its awesome power, the power of a master predator. To the Huitoto, the world is a magical web of which they are only a part. Like the creatures they hunt, they take what they need from the world. Nothing more, nothing less. But much of mankind, in its long march from mere survival to what we call civilization, has followed a different path. The lone hunter has given way to a more deadly predator, the paid assassin who prowls the wild, killing for cash. has replaced the subsistence hunter, and the ancient balance between predator and prey has been upset. Man the predator has arrogantly rewritten the rules in his favor. Though it may seem brutal to our eyes, predation in the world of nature proceeds according to a plan which ensures that neither the hunted nor the hunter can gain the ultimate edge. The timeless dramas of survival unfold every moment of every day, repeating in endless ways as they have since time began. There is a balance here which we would do well to remember and preserve. <laughs> 